Okay, everybody is here. Uh, we have the final speaker for the day. It's Ricardo Banfi, uh, who's going to talk about lessons learned after 190 million lessons served. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Uh, um, I'm here to talk about uh, some lessons. Before anything else, uh, I have to say that I'm new to Udemy, and most of what, uh, what I'll describe happened before uh, I arrived. What I'll talk about is, therefore, the work of other people. And the lessons, however, uh, I think they stand on their own. Well, this is where we are now. Uh, Udemy was founded in 2010. Uh, and in six years, it grew to 11 million students, 40,000 courses given by 20,000 uh, instructors in 80 languages. The 190 million lessons served number I, I used for the title was gathered from a table that tracks students watching our videos. Uh, lesson one is about preserving the, our culture as we grow. We are a learning company, and learning is in our DNA. For any healthy organization, preserving its culture is essential to its well-being. Uh, what I'll talk about is about the engineering team. Other teams have different, uh, different things they do. Um, well, we are very serious about onboarding onboarding new employees. The idea is to get uh, a new hire from a new hire to a productive engineer in the shortest possible time. We use extensive automation. We have standardized uh, development environments, uh, development environment that's reasonably flexible. And if you really want to, you are able to deploy our website on your first day. I did that in the first week. Even I can do it. Uh, we learn and teach uh, ourselves using our own tools. Uh, there are Udemy courses about our applications uh, from the user perspective, from the backend perspective, uh, that are given by our own team. So you can hear about the application as it's described by the people who created it. We also communicate a lot. We have hundreds of people uh, in three continents. Uh, and we spend 11 time zones. We all hang out on Slack. We use HipChat until I like yesterday, literally. We just moved. Uh, we also use Scrum. We have the usual stand-ups, uh, grooming sessions. We also have hangouts. Uh, uh, hangouts. Uh, we, conduce, we conduct all hands meetings on hangouts or other solutions if we have too many people. Every meeting room is capable of joining a hangout. We have big screen, a camera, a good microphone. So we can join, uh, we have meetings, we can have easily meetings that span more than one team in one place. Uh, well, like I said before, we use automation a lot. We automate the quality checks. We, we can't commit ugly code, seriously. We can't commit code with one extra line. We can't commit code with uh, missing spaces. Uh, we can't push broken code. Uh, that means Git runs a basic set of tests before we are allowed to commit, before we are allowed to push. To commit, it's flake eight. So, still, anyway. And you can't merge if the, your code doesn't pass a very extensive set of tests. So you're absolutely sure that when you merge your code, 
you will not break anything. Also, uh, we also use custom tools, uh, custom Django admin scripts, custom uh, uh, Django admin commands to help prevent accidents. So if you want to update a series of records, a series of uh, objects in the data store, you will not be handed a SQL, uh, MySQL prompt. In fact, it's uh, very few people who have that kind of access. Instead, you'll, have, you'll do that through code that's uh, reviewed by someone else, that's known to be, uh, I won't say bug-free, but it probably is less bug-free than you typing SQL commands on the MySQL prompt. Uh, even though we do, uh, we go to such great lengths to prevent that, some accidents happen. Uh, I myself deleted a shared database on my fourth week, fourth week uh, at the company. I was out of the Dublin office where I'm based, I was in San Francisco. And I uh, deleted one of our shared databases. Not production environment, development environment. But thanks to me, the whole development team of the San Francisco office, which is very large actually, uh, had a mandatory coffee break because no one could do anything. Yeah, there's some room for improvement. Uh, what we can do to that? Uh, well, we have that shared database. We're working now uh, to have uh, an individual database for everyone with just enough data so, you can, so that you can run your uh, development uh, with meaningful data. We also constantly make improvements to our uh, development environment. Uh, we add, uh, all the time we add code that makes it easier to develop. We add extra checks, we add uh, some extra functionalities that were not there before. Uh, personally, uh, last week I think, no, uh, last month, I added uh, a bit of code that made some three objects represent themselves in a nicer way uh, on the terminal, on the IPDB prompt. It was a horrendously complicated logic, and by that, uh, I had someone lessened my cognitive workload so that I, my, uh, with my uh, uh, somewhat limited brain, I could wrap it around a very complicated problem without having to worry about uh, imagining what the objects looked like. I could just print them on the screen and have a look into them. The second thing, the second lesson, is that as you grow, you start to, you, you have to, well, all the time you should, you should be measuring everything anyway. When you grow, you, you will start measuring, measuring it in bulk. So, every application we have generates, uh, collects metrics about themselves, uh, about itself. We collect those metrics in a huge, uh, not Facebook huge, but still pretty impressive scale. For that, we use stuff like Sentry, uh, Datadog, and Chart.io. This is not, uh, although this is considered something important to us, these applications are good enough so we don't have to develop them again. These guys are good. So, uh, Datadog, uh, Sentry for alerts, Google Analytics, and most of the front end is uh, constantly monitored with that. Also, we have a, a huge user base. With that comes the possibility of doing extensive tests and experiments where you enable some feature and you can track on A-B tests how the user base behaves. Since you have a lot of people coming, you'll have good quality data on that. And we can actually know how something will impact us well before we enable it to the whole user base. This way surprises are minimized, which is good. I, li I don't like surprises. Uh, that also allows us to have early warnings. Uh, if something 
starts to be, uh, if you see the distribution, say, of execution time of a given function, and you have a peak at like 100 milliseconds, and you start developing a peak at zero milliseconds, you know something is wrong. So you can watch those distributions on a tool like Datadog. And this data must be uh, timely. We must receive it uh, soon after it's collected. We, can, we must be able to see it immediately. Uh, this large user base is all, uh, it's convenient because it generates a lot of data, data we can analyze, but it also amplifies any trend very quickly. And it's really not that good for you if you only know that uh, what caused an outage of a, a week-long outage of a service. You don't want that. You want to know, if possible, before. Am I going too fast? No? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I suspect you'll like this one. It's about questioning and uh, being a bit uh, willing to abandon an approach. Let me say that. They, Netscape in this case, delayed a new version by three years. They did it by making the single worst strategic mistake that any software company can make. They decided to rewrite the code from scratch. Okay, uh, this is Joe Spolsky. Who knows Joe Spolsky? Raise your hand. Well, for those who don't know him, he's a pretty clever guy. Uh, he created a lot of stuff we use daily, like Trello or Stack Overflow. Who is a Stack Overflow here? Come on. No, I don't believe you, no, no. Everyone should raise hands that. Okay. Uh, he said it in an article, uh, this things you should never do, that everyone should read, even if you want to disagree with him later. Told you you'd like it. Yes, we moved from PHP. We had a large PHP application built on a custom-made framework created by, designed internally by our founders. Uh, who here has, uh, has built their own framework? Who thought at that time it was a good idea? <laughs> Who regrets that now? Okay, we're good. Uh, this is a problem because new hires have to be trained on a, a framework they have never seen. And it takes a long time. Uh, it ties an expensive resource. It ties an engineer that's already trained on that. Uh, and the engineer will be tied and not building useful things, useful things for the business, useful features, uh, things users are demanding. Uh, that specific code base had very little tests. With uh, the lack of tests, maintenance becomes walking on a minefield. And the fear of breaking stuff and not seeing it until it goes into production or worse yet, until it corrupts user data will drive you to adopt a very careful approach. You will always, you end up opting for safe uh, changes instead of using, in, instead of writing some more maintainable more elegant, more performant uh, code. You may even be tempted to replicate side effects of a previous implementation out of fear you'll break something you are not seeing. And obviously, this makes development slower and more expensive. So, what did they do? And I say they because I arrived right after the uh, the migration was finished. So I didn't even see that happening. I, that's a, such a shame, I'd love to see that. 
I'd love to be able to delete some PHP code. So what did they do? Uh, no, they didn't jump for the first technology uh, or the technology they loved the most. They actually created a project and evaluated. They evaluated the various options. Uh, they did a small uh, proof of concept project with each of those. And with what they learned, they guided the decision. They looked into uh, how easy it was to develop for that platform what they knew, how well the platform encourages good practices, and how easy it is it would be to onboard uh, new engineers on them. Yes, this is a serious project. It's not a uh, a lot of resources was put behind it. Uh, they set deadlines, they agreed on goals. They did that as, as if the company depended on it, because actually it did. Well, um, I know you probably have guessed which technology they chose, because I wouldn't be here talking about it. I would be on NodeConf or something, some other conference selling stuff instead of here. Well, what uh, Udemy got, what, uh, uh, and what beautiful environment I, am, uh, I have the luxury of working with. Well, we got a modern uh, Django-based application. And modern, it runs on Python 3.5 and Django 1.8. We are considering the move to Django 1.9. Uh, it also allows us to onboard engineers much quicker because Django is an opinionated framework and you don't have to teach every decision we made, every decision Udemy made. A lot of decisions are already baked in the platform. We have 88% of test coverage. That's not perfect. We can do, we probably will improve that. Uh, one of the things is that we can't commit code, we can't merge code if with the merge, the code coverage goes below a certain threshold. I have cursed this decision a couple of times myself. In the end, it's for good. With all that, we had also a lot of new features. We had a more consistent code base, which is what opinionated frameworks, frameworks are for. And, well, there is some, of course, as anything that was migrated, there is some scar tissue where PHP and Django co coexisted. Some table names are a bit odd. Some field names are a bit interesting. And uh, we have some special field types and some parts where we have to fight, to fight uh, Django's opinions. And let me tell you, Django is very persistent in fighting back. Who had here to fight back? Oh, you laughed, come on. Someone raise a hand. Okay. And what did we learn from that? Well, the migration took a while, but it's two years. Two years with 30% of the engineering team dedicated to it. Uh, it was done incrementally, feature by feature. And there's a motivation thing uh, on that. Uh, the, the team involved, in the, the team responsible for the migration uh, tracked the progress by counting the lines they actually deleted. This is why I'm wearing this T-shirt. They call themselves the delitinators. With pride, deserved one. Uh, I'm, I borrowed the t-shirt. I didn't delete any PHP line, so. Uh, all the time, the website was up and running. And it was, uh, as you would browse the pages, you would see an hi a hybrid PHP Django application showing your, your page, showing the data you're, you were used to. Also, uh, since everything was changing, 
mindset would, mindsets would have to change. So that's where the uh, automa automated checks come from. So instead of ending up with an untested uh, code base, they enforced some things that they consider mistakes. They learned from the PHP code base and they worked uh, against the impulse to allow the, the Django code base to be like that. Uh, there's also a final lesson here. This is about uh, the importance of the mission. As I mentioned in the start, you, we are a learning company. We exist to help anyone learn anything. That's quite a goal. This also means that anyone can teach something to anyone else. We all have things we like to talk about. We all have passions. We all, all, all have stuff that we would like to teach other people if we could. Or there are th stuff we'd like to know more if only we could find a person who could teach us. Uh, what is the impact? About one third of the Udemy students are starting or growing their own business using the uh, knowledge they acquired through the platform for that. We also have lots of people who became full-time instructor, instructors who uh, basically uh, changed careers from being something to teaching that something they lo love to do. If you visit our stand, you'll see a couple sheets of stories of how Udemy changed the, the lives of those, those people. And uh, I'll tell one of those stories, not one that's on the, uh, that sheet, those paper sheets. Uh, well, uh, I'll tell the story as it was told to me by my colleague Erin, who actually knows this smiling, nice guy. Uh, he's Lynn Smith. He had a lifetime career as a copywriter. He wrote uh, ads for companies like Vodafone, Lloyd's, BBC, IBM. And after this lifetime career, he decided it was time to retire and to keep himself busy as his career, as he winded down his company, his career, he got involved with Udemy. And he decided to start, no, oh, I can start teaching people to write proper copy. Well, uh, it turns out he probably didn't retire because as of now, he has uh, taught more than uh, 56,000 students. Uh, I myself was very impressed with this number because I was once a teacher and uh, my largest class was like 50, stu 50 60 students uh, on, for a course that took 20 classes, 20 weekly classes. If I were to get close to what his, this guy did after he retired, it would take me 500 years to do that. This is a 10x guy. 500x guy, probably. Uh, when I read the stories, when I read uh, the messages our internal emails send uh, forward that our students send, uh, I see uh, our mission is very, very important. Uh, in the end, everything we do, everything we, we do at Udemy, uh, everything we all do here at EuroPython is about the people, is about the community. It's about people, it's about teaching, it's about learning and sharing. This is what we do. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. Uh, if you in case you buy a course, if you use the import this for zero, 
uh, uh, code, you'll get a 40% discount. Any questions? Okay, give a big, uh, okay, there's. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, I know nothing about Django, but you said that you have to fight the framework back. Django so is you, an example, like, I, I know nothing about Django. But Django is an opinionated like framework. So it assumes you want to do stuff uh, in a certain specific way. Uh, I know it's no longer the case, uh, but a, a good example I can bring up is from, uh, I think, a long time ago, and I met that situation. I wanted to, I was doing an image bank for uh, a portal, and we wanted to save the images, the originals, uh, in a way that they would be deduplicated. With, uh, which, which meant we would change the, use, the, the file name that was uploaded to a different one, and they would play, uh, they, we would place it on a different folder than what Django wanted to do. It took me like one week to build the, the application and three weeks to build the logic to allow the, the, the application to save the files where we wanted them to. And it was really, really ugly code at that. Anyone else? Hi. Uh, you said that uh, Django and uh, old PHP code coexist at the same time, right? You, you probably didn't just uh, flip the switch. Uh, so can you explain this a bit more? Like you probably couldn't uh, use uh, internal Django road system and other features. Like how did you manage to do this, that the, the both for, uh, systems coexist? Uh, Django and PHP share the same database with the same uh, data. That's why we have some strange table names in some parts of some older parts of the system. Uh, the URL routing was done both on the web server and the Django application. So some, some of the URLs would direct the PHP application some would uh, send you to the Django application. Is that what you wanted? Okay, so uh, after you launched fully Django, then you had to do some cleanup the code. Yes, because the you, code you was basically hard coded uh, some of the URLs and some yeah. stuff. Yeah, as the as the PHP code was uh, being removed, uh, the rules that sent to it, uh, the code itself, it was deleted from the the, the configuration. Any more questions? Sorry, it's not planned, but I can clarify the routing. What we did is we had an Nginx front-end load balancer, and we had routes, custom routes, a giant routing table in there that would selectively route traffic to the Django app or let it route back to the PHP app. We just slowly deleted those routes and let more and more routes fall through to the Django app. That's basically how we flipped over without doing a big bang release. So if things went wrong, we could just simply add the route back in and went back to the PHP app again. Okay, thank you for that. So I hope to see you all at the lighting talks. Let's thank Ricardo. Thank you.